while watching this episode, you looked as disinterested as you do when I put a cooking video on YouTube. You look as disinterested as when somebody starts talking about a new diet they're on. <laughs> this week on Close Talkers, we watched Season 5, Episode 6, The Lip Reader. <laughs> So, Katie. Hello, Derek. How did you like the lip reader? Well, given that I can't stop yawning. Uh, you, I don't think I heard you laugh once the entire time we were watching no. this. Did you laugh? No, but I knew what was going to happen. Mm. Like, there was no... You could still laugh at things that you know are going to be funny. Sometimes I do. <laughs> Not today. No. Uh, yeah, this was kind of a dud, I thought. Well... This dud was written by Carol Liefer. So she was apparently one of the main influences for the Elaine character. Oh. And she was a stand-up comic, and she would take cabs and stuff between gigs, and she would, like, bury her face in a magazine to avoid talking to the mm. cabbie. Did she and Jerry Seinfeld date? Oh, I don't know. I think so. Maybe. They decided they were better off as friends. It was directed by Tom Sharonis. It aired on October 28th, 1993. Vulture.com ranked it as the 41st best episode. Really? Screen Crush ranked it as the 23rd best episode. So that's what you exclaimed when you were doing your research? I, you went, bah! I found that surprising. I mean... I don't think I've disagreed more with the ranking. Probably not. I don't know. What did they like about it? Vulture.com said that uh, a single big moment can make up for a terrible episode, and it said that the single big moment in this episode was George's face covered in oh, chocolate on. sauce. So they they said it's a terrible episode, and a chocolate-smeared face is the only redeeming quality it has. As this episode and the glasses prove, there are many episodes of Seinfeld where single big moments, quotes, images, actions, compensate for an underwhelming plot. So, while Marley Matlin's turn as a lip reader who helps George learn why an ex-girlfriend dumped him in a recent... There's a lot of talking to do. You're gonna cut that all out anyways? Probably. Well, f*** it. Yeah, so they're basically saying this was a bad episode and then there was one funny sight gag. So it's worth being 40th? Screen Crush kind of said the same thing, but it said, like, the idea of using a lip reader mm. uh, and, like, that premise yields the scene in the restaurant where they're hiding their mouths. They said... Oh, you know what? I did laugh at that. That was uh, a good moment. And then the uh, the scene in the apartment at the party where the, like, miscommunication happens. So I guess we'll get there or we'll just talk about it now. She is a, a a deaf person and a real deaf person who can speak. So why does she need Kramer? Why didn't yeah, she just stand beside just George? Just stand beside George and from there, I, mean, I don't know why. For comedic purposes. Probably. Um, What was the first sign that Kramer did? Is that what you were talking about last week? No. So, if you, so last week I talked about how, like... The sign that she uses doesn't make sense. And I guess you could play it off that Kramer doesn't know sign language. Mm. But it's the sign that she uses when Kramer says sleep together is like okay, like clearly a, a flat hand <laughs> with your other hand, like brushing stuff across it. And she repeatedly used that whenever yeah. the characters... Todd and Gwen. Uh, Gwen. I guess we haven't done the guest stars yet. Uh, said sweep. Yeah. So the only way this makes sense is if this sweeping sign <laughs> Kramer thinks means sleep, which like. You don't know what he does in the bedroom. But it doesn't make sense that he would think like it, it doesn't work. If you, <laughs> if you think about the, the, the miscommunication. Well, let's throw it back to last week. When I asked you if you remembered this episode. Jerry or George 
use a deaf woman to read lips at a party to figure out whether or not their girlfriend is cheating on them. And? I think I nailed it. Who are the guest stars? This episode's guest stars include Christopher Darga, who played the driver. He was in Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. Oh, really? He was one of the voices. Oh, his face is familiar, though. What else? He was in Dude, Where's My Car? Oh, yeah. And Bruce Almighty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Linda Cash played the part of Gwen. She was in Best in Show, Waiting for Guffman, and Man of the Year. Oh, that that uh, constellation of people. The Christopher Guest people. Yeah. Jim. I thought, sorry to interrupt, I thought maybe that was Tracy Ullman. Does she look like Tracy Ullman? Oh, uh... Or maybe like Amy Sedaris? Anyway, go on. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. Jerry Sroka played Todd. Todd. <laughs> he was in Godspell, our almost completely true story, and Ants. Hmm. Marley Matlin played Laura. She was in Picket Fences, Switched at Birth, and Quantico. She's someone I've heard of, but I've never seen her in anything. Mm. I feel like she was in a bunch of stuff in like the late 90s, yeah. early 2000s. and I do not have many notes on this episode. Oh, me neither. I'll read the synopsis. George gets caught on TV eating a messy Sunday. Jerry dates a deaf tennis official. Kramer auditions to be a ball man. And Elaine fakes hearing loss. So the first stand-up is about the tennis shushing. Mm-hmm. What did I write down? Shushing, scoring, be quieter. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> He gets shushed in a tennis match. The scoring is weird, and then thirty love. It's what a what a British uh, prostitute might say. It'll be thirty love. Mm-hmm. Next time, be quieter. Do you know that love is uh, etymology is the French word luf, which means like represents a zero. And English people didn't know what they're saying, so they were like love. Yeah, but why wouldn't they just say zero? Because it looks like an egg. So, you're not playing egg badminton. You're not playing table tennis with eggs. So, you're not batting an egg around. It also it also looks like a tennis ball. I mean, I know like these are these are like professionals and we got to be like all serious and everything, but like really like you got to make like a little bit of noise and these guys can't uh, hit the ball. <laughs> what other sport? Golf. Oh, uh, yeah. Golf, the exact same thing. Everybody has to shush, and then they hit it, and then some guy screams out in the hole yeah. all the time. But I can see, because golf is broken up into actions, so like when mm. you're taking your swing, it's okay to ask people to be quiet for like 10 seconds, I think. Mm. But to be quiet during a whole rally, mm-hmm. like why? You that That person... I'm not a professional tennis player, but I feel like after a serve, you can talk. Quiet. Quiet, please. (laughs) Uh, I don't know why. I just watched a clip of a tennis player destroying his racket. Mm. And uh, the commentators, he smashes it on the ground like five times. And the commentator goes, well, the good news is that he has several more, and he walks over and picks up another one and smashes it on the ground. <laughs> and a third one <laughs> smashes it on the ground. Those are the Smashing Rackets. <laughs> it's the name of my punk band in high school, the Smashing Rackets. Oh, and then the Smashing Pumpkins came out, and you're like, well, um, no, I guess they're going to change it. Yeah. How do you feel about uh, SPF 25 Sunblock? I mean, for me, not enough. Mm. But in the 90s, I feel like that's pretty standard. Yeah. I feel like we just keep, like, up in. Right, like in the nineties, twenty five was like maybe you get like a thirty, yeah, and then like, like now we're what seventy is like you can get a hundred if you want. Crazy town banana pants. Okay, but it's not like it's stronger sunscreen. Just lasts longer. Yeah, it's how many minutes you you can go without reapplying it or something, unless you sweat or get wet. No, that is not what it is. So what is it? It's the it, it it so it's the factor that sun that you can stay out longer in the sun. So so how many minutes you can stay out? 
exactly what I said? No, you said how long it lasts without getting wet. No, that's not what I said at all. Roll a tape. How long you can stay out in the sun unless Hmm. you sweat it off or it gets wet and you have to reapply more often. That is what I said. I guess it's how you look at it. Yeah, you're you're talking sunscreen with a ginger? Come on. Well, we got to talk about something because I don't want to talk about this stupid episode. I remember Uh, buying or having a sunscreen that was, I should have looked up the name, but it was, it had no PABA. And it was like, it was advertised on the entire bottle as PABA free. I'm going to look it up. What's PABA? I don't know. Are all... Parabens? um, Yeah, that's kind of what I assumed. Are all sunscreens now PABA free? I think so. Para aminobenzoic acid. Oh, yeah, you don't want that. It occurs naturally in the body. And it's found in foods like grain, eggs, milk, and meat. So it's it's natural. I mean, cyanide's natural. It's also known as vitamin B10. Huh. It darkens gray hair, improves skin issues that involve tissue buildup and hardening. It sounds like a miracle drug. That's exactly the words I was about <laughs> to use. Uh, I want some Paba. I want some uh, some Wegovi. Uh, I'll just be like, fantastic. <laughs> uh, people got skin reactions to it. Oh. And it had carcinogenic potential. Yeah, yeah, but, what what doesn't have carcinogenic potential? Come on. Yeah. Everything's got potential. What does George call the attractive lines woman, a BL? BL. What, what did it stand for? Beautiful lines woman. <laughs> what do you think about this idea that a party is a bad situation for a couple? Like, it seemed weird, like... A common friend of ours, the guy that introduced us, is having a party. Like, I, how is that would, a bad situation? What do you mean? I would say neither of them should go. Well, this is be- this is pre-breakup. Oh, okay. Because, like Jerry says, you don't want to be... Jerry's assuming that you're going to have to talk to your date and only your date the whole time. And that you can't socialize with other people. Counter-argument. Don't do that. It's not like she doesn't know the host, yeah. so like, this is, this is fine. And they must have some other mutual friends, and she probably knows, like, Jerry and Elaine. And there you go. Kramer. I mean, if there's a cat at the party. You just pet the cat. Yeah. So when Jerry and George are in the stands, that lineswoman has been facing the court the entire time, and Jerry is looking at her backside. Mm. Like, he hasn't seen her face. Well... When you, like, go to get the ball, you run, you pick up the ball, and you go to the other side. But so, she's she's a li- she's not a ball girl. Oh, she's a judge? She, she's a line judge. Mm. So she's she's glued to that spot. Maybe she turned around and he saw her face. Mm. Maybe, maybe. Maybe her backside is all he needed to see. It's, uh. Look, I'm usually on Jerry's side, but he's, like gross in this episode like i gotta talk to this woman or i'll never forgive myself Mm. and then he says hello and she doesn't answer and he's like oh what you're too good for me oh like immediately nagging her well they needed like the reaction for like oh what are you deaf also so rude like there's a funnier way to come up there's there's a funnier way to meet cute these two people but she's deaf Elaine's justifications for why she's not a bad person are weird. Remember this entire time where I've been like, these are all bad people? And you've been like, yeah. Elaine's okay. I, I think I'm starting to see it. She's she's turning the corner for you, huh? I don't stare at the freaks. <laughs> yeah. I also don't look away. You make the freaks feel uh, welcome. I don't throw things at the squirrels. I say, shoo, get out of here. When I go to the movies, I don't poof up my hair. Have you ever thought of a hearing aid? And my hearing aids? No, you gotta live your life. God forbid you discuss the jumble. (laughs) Really, though, this guy, like... As a a driver, you should know, people don't want to talk to you. No. And he then kicks them all out of the car later. Can he do that? 
Right? These, I guess safety isn't in, in jeopardy. He just doesn't like Elaine, so he kicks everyone out. He's being paid by her company. I guess you could say, well, so she gave him the tickets to Metallica. Yeah. Like. Metella something. Ka? Huh? Uh. That's a awful joke. It didn't, like, even flow very well no. among the actors. They should have, like. Was that their best take? Couldn't have been their best take. <laughs> I guess it was their best take because they used it regardless. Yeah, I mean, he, he probably can't throw them out. She was abusing the car service. She was. So you recently uh, bought me a coffee table book mm-hmm. uh, about it, it was excerpts from Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, mm-hmm. hosted by Jerry Seinfeld. And I. Who's the guy from Boston, Ginger? Uh, Conan O'Brien? Nope. Um, angrier. Bill Burr? Yes. There's a <laughs> excerpt for uh, Jerry talking to Bill Burr. And Bill Burr is talking about like being in cabs and them talking and being like absolutely hilarious. Mm-hmm. But they can't, they can do that like one on one in their cab. They can't go on stage and, and do that. Sure. So like maybe they have a captive audience. You have to laugh. What well, else are you gonna do? so so Bill Burr was like the, these guys are hilarious, and if they ever figured out what it was to be able to like do that on stage, he'd be out of a job. Mm. But like they can't do that because they're if they could, they wouldn't be driving cabs. Anyway, so I was gonna say like as a as a, as a cab driver, you should be like people don't want to talk to me. But I guess like in this Bill Burr's world, he's finding hilarious cab drivers. So. Well, I I don't mind talking to someone who's driving me around, but you you kind of like exchange pleasantries. Yeah. And then you know, I usually ask like how how how's your day going or whatever. And then you, you could talk about stuff. And sometimes mm-hmm. you do and sometimes you don't, but both people have to recognize which way it's going. Sure, yeah. I find it awkward if somebody doesn't say anything. Sure. Yeah, that would be weird. Yeah. I know someone who drove for Uber or Lyft for a year. He's like a like a weird <laughs> he's a weird person. I think he was writing a book and he wanted to have the experience of talking to a lot of people. Mm. Um and wasn't finding the opportunity just in day to day life, so took up a side gig driving for Uber. He has that captive audience that have to listen to him. I guess. Or he can listen to them if they want to talk. I noticed some new things in Jerry's apartment. Some of his cereals that I didn't notice before. One of them is called Triples. Mm. And I looked it up. It's like Rice Krispies, but they're puffed corn, wheat, and rice. Isn't puffed corn just popcorn? I guess it was in a little, like, Rice Krispie shape. Mm. I don't know. They, they all the pebbles look the same. Oh. And then another one I noticed was mini buns. So it's like tiny little cinnamon buns. And the like marketing quote for mini buns was an easier way for moms to slip some nutrition into your kids' diet because it had oats in it. Mm. <laughs> Still a tiny cinnamon bun. The the nutritional value of <laughs> most cereals is dubious at best. Well, especially in the 90s. Yeah. Now I think it's gotten much better. I mean, you can still buy Lucky Charms. Yeah, but I think like even like like a Raisin Bran, there's like... Who buys Raisin Bran? But Raisin Bran is in theory a healthy cereal and there's like 40 grams of sugar per serving. Well, because they put two big scoops of raisins into it. <laughs> my, my case in point. They, they think that your slip, that's an easy way for moms to slip vitamins into the kid's diet. It's an easy way for moms to slip more sugar into the kid's diet. Yeah. It seems like oats and raisins are not the, not, they're not, they're not the goal here. They're not S tier. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but who do you think should go to the party and who do you think shouldn't in this situation? What's the etiquette? I can see Jerry's point that George needs it. Mm. And I can see Elaine's point that Gwen is also friends with Todd, and why should she not go? Mm. So, 
If I was George, I wouldn't go. I might go to the next one. Hmm. But like right after getting dumped, I wouldn't go to that party. What do you think? I think probably like, I mean, you can say like, oh, we both know him, but like, who's a better friend? Or, like, <laughs> who knew him more? Or, who knew him longer? Who's level jumping here? Yeah, exactly. I think that's what you do. Hmm. I mean, they have to drive pretty far. Just on that alone, I'd be like, no, she can go. Sure, yeah. If it's inconvenient, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> When's the last time we went to a party at someone's house? I literally cannot remember. I don't know. COVID's weird. I got nothing. I don't know. When I do my uh, my my swims at uh, with my, my oh. friends, does that oh. count as a party? Yeah, I guess it does. A party that only you are invited to. Well, neat when you go to well, yeah, there's so you have been to parties recently. You go to play D and D with your friends at their house. Uh, so do you? I feel like yours is more of a party atmosphere. <laughs> well, your group plays online, and mine has never done that. Yeah, and we're always in person. So I guess by that rule, technically, it's more of a party atmosphere. You got a whole digital board thing going on. You got... Snacks. There you, well, we have snacks, too. Yeah, but they're your own snacks in your own house. That's not a party. Oh, when we're playing, yeah. But when we, we, we on occasion will play in person and there's snacks. Hmm. So there you go. You go to more parties than me. You play more often than I do. You're playing every other week. Nah, okay, tired of talking about this <laughs> okay let's talk about this episode there's a real corker six is good uh. do you not think that in context she would know that he's saying six well i don't know it's at the end of their first date and uh he's dropping her off and he's like hey how about sex sex is good well you got a problem with sex she doesn't know who this guy is He's, he's, a, he's a guy that approaches women at tennis matches and gets their number and takes them out and brings their friend along on the first date. We haven't talked yeah. about that. Yeah. But then she still goes to the party with him. She's horrified in the car. Well, they, they, there's like a throwaway line in... or like a little. She's going to meet us there. No, no, no. But the, uh, Jerry says... Jerry explains to George that she got it mixed up, but he sorted it out. Oh, yeah. Um, when Kramer goes to try out for the ball boy thing and he's like talking to the young kids and mm -hmm. they're like razzing each other, aren't all those guys too old to be ball boys? Every one of those other people were in their like mid twenties too, right? Like, I don't know. There's like teenagers in the eighties and nineties looked like that. Mm. Why does Kramer spin? He doesn't need to spin. He's got gusto. Why does Kramer do anything? <laughs> I guess. Get a Superman reference. It's like having Superman as your friend. Mm-hmm. Taking a lip reader to a party. And like immediately word spreads and everybody wants to borrow mm -hmm. Jerry's new toy. Mm. That's literally all I wrote about this. Thus ends the great ball man experiment. Who won the 93 US Open? Who won the 2022? I don't know. Do you follow tennis? But if it's on, I'll watch it. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah. Anyway, what's up for next week? Next week is the non-fat yogurt. Non-fat yogurt. What's so a non-fat yogurt, non-fat frozen yogurt shop opens up in the neighborhood, and Jerry and Elaine keep going to it. And then there's some um, uh, questionability about whether or not it's actually non-fat. So I have some corrections. You said you had a correction. I had an omission. Oh. That I, I, I remembered during the episode and I forgot to bring it up when we recorded. For last week. Yes. So what is it? When I was uh, apartment hunting in Toronto, um, in it was the place that uh, I was in when we first met each other. Uh, I met the previous tenant when it was being shown. And I kind of just asked her, like, oh, like, has anything like, bad ever happened in the building expecting to be like you know break-ins or mm -hmm. something and she was like oh well one of the residents uh committed suicide by jumping off the roof and landed on my car 
I'm like, that's exactly what happened in this episode. Oh my god. Is that why she was moving? No, that's why they installed the nets on the balcony. <laughs> Okay. So last week we talked about a hundred sided die, which I looked up. It's called a Zokihedron. Zokihedron. It's a patented thing by Weird. Mr. Zoki. Um, but it's not a like polyhedral die. It's a round ball with mm. numbers on it inside a plastic ball with water. So Oh, it's like a it has weights inside and you know. I've seen polyhedral. Maybe, but the, the pattern is for like oh. just a ball inside a ball. Hmm. Like a magic eight ball, kind of. Yeah. But then there are polyhedral 100 sided die. They're not patented. So they're just 100, a D100. Well, there you go. The Robertson uh, screws and screwdrivers mm-hmm. were. Considered by Consumer Reports to be far superior to the Philips. 100%, yeah. However, outside of Canada, nobody uses them. Because of a patent? Philips just... Well, uh, Mr. Robertson um, wanted to expand to the U.S. and the like. toolmakers there were like, sure, but we're going to own the patent. He's like, no. Mm-hmm. And then he got screwed. The whole rest of the world is, like, Philip's territory. Yep. Um, and last week you suggested that we should put our podcast on YouTube because it's not showing up on Google Podcasts anymore. And YouTube is the... S-tier social media site. YouTube's the sh- So guess what? We're on YouTube. We're on YouTube. Like, subscribe. Close Talkers Pod. Uh, audio only. But there are subtitles. In case you're deaf. <laughs> yep. Or would like to read what we say. So, last week's episode, The Briss, is up there as the first one. The subtitles are auto generated. And I don't edit them because they're long and I don't care. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's just our silly podcast. But for some reason, the software gave us names. Oh. Called me Shelly. Okie dokie. And you Bowen. <laughs> That's not a real name. <laughs> but in all caps, when we're talking over each other, it's like Shelly says this, Bowen says this. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if next time that happens again. That's why I said your name clearly at the beginning of this episode. I see. Derek. Katie. Mm hmm. So yeah, so many options for listening. We're available everywhere. You cannot avoid us. Mm, he tried. That's it? That's all. Bye. Bye-bye. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?